Yes. Hey, Edgar Hoover on 2192. Are you familiar with this uh, proposed group that they're trying to put together on this study of your report and other things, uh, two from the House, two from the Senate, somebody in the court, and, uh, a couple outsiders? No, I haven't heard of that. I, I, I've seen the uh, reports on this on the Senate investigating committee that they've been talking about. Yeah, well, we think if we don't have... I want to get by just uh, with your file and your report. Uh, I think it would be, be very, very bad to have a rash of investigations. Well, the thing. only way we can stop them is probably uh, to appoint a high-level one to evaluate your report yeah. and put somebody that's uh, pretty good on it from uh, that I could select uh, uh, out of the government uh, and tell the House and Senate uh, not to go ahead with the investigation. Yes. Because we get up there and get a bunch of television going, and I thought it'd be bad. It'd be a three-ring circus. Yeah. What do you think about Alan Dulles? Uh, I think he would be a good man. What do you think about John McCloy? Uh, I'm not as enthusiastic about about McCloy. I knew him back in the Patterson, when Patterson's down here, the secretary thing. He's a good man, but uh, I'm not so certain as to the uh, matter of the publicity that he might seek on it. Mm -hmm. What about General Nordstrom? Uh, a good man. I guess Boggs has started in the House. I thought maybe I might try to get Boggs and Jerry Ford uh, in the House, maybe try to get Dick Russell and uh, maybe Cooper in the Senate. Yes, I think so. I don't know. You know anything, any reason? Uh, just talking to me and you're going to talk like brothers. Yeah, no, no other reason. Any reason, uh, uh, any there? I thought Russell could kind of look after uh, the general situation and uh, see that uh, the states uh, and their relationship. Russell would be an excellent man. And I thought Cooper might look after the liberal group. Who's that? Uh, Cooper from Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Cooper. So they wouldn't think that he's a pretty judicious fellow, yeah. but he's a pretty liberal fellow. Yes. I wouldn't want Javits or, no, no. or, or some of those no. fellows on it. Uh, uh, Javits plays the front page of Cooper, Cooper, Cooper's kind of uh, border state. Yes. Yeah. It's not the south, it's not the north. That's right. Do you know Ford from Michigan? Uh, I know of him, but I don't know him. I saw him on TV the other night for the first time. He handled himself well on that. You know Boggs? Uh, I, oh, yes, I know Boggs. He's kind of off of the resolution. That's yeah, what I know. Yes, yes, I know him. Now, Walter tells me, Walter Jenkins, that, uh, that you've designated Deke to work with us like you did on the Hill. I have, I yes. I tell you, I sure appreciate that. I didn't ask for it because I knew you knew how to run your business better than anybody else. And I just want to tell you, though, it. We consider him as high class as you do, and it's a mighty gracious thing to do, and we'd be mighty happy. And well, we, we, we salute you for knowing how to pick good men. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Mr. President, indeed. Okay. Uh, we're being, uh, we hope to have this thing wrapped up today, but we're being, we probably won't get it before the first of the week. This angle in Mexico is giving us a great deal of trouble mm -hmm. because uh, the stories I have this man, Oswald, getting $6,500 uh, from the Cuban embassy. Uh, and then coming back to this country with it. Uh, they, we, we're not able to prove uh, that fact. But the information was that he was there on the 18th of September in Mexico City, and we, have, we are able to prove conclusively he was in New Orleans that day. Now then they moved, they changed the date. The story came in changing the date to the 28th of, of September, and he was in Mexico City on the 28th. Now the Mexican police have again arrested this woman, Duran, who's a member of the, of the uh, Cuban embassy, and we'll hold her for two or three more days. And we're going to confront her with the, the original informant who saw the money pass, so he says, and we're also going to put the lie detector test on it. Meantime, of course, Castro's hollering his head off. Can you pay attention to those lie detector tests? I, I would not uh, pay 100% uh, uh, attention to them. All that they are is a psychological uh, asset in, a, in an investigation. I wouldn't want to be a part to sending a man to the chair on a lie detector. Uh, they, uh, for instance, we have found many cases where, where we've used them and in a bank where there's been embezzlement, and a person will confess before the lie detector test is finished. They're more or less fearful of the fact that the lie detector test will show them guilty. Psychologically, uh, there's that advantage because it's a misnomer to call it a lie detector because what it really is, it's the evaluation of the chart that is made by this machine. Uh, it, and that evaluation is made by a human being. And any human being can uh, be apt to make a wrong interpretation. 
So I would not myself go on that alone. If, on the other hand, in the, if this fellow Oswald had lived and had taken the, uh, the lie detector test and it had shown definitely uh, that he had done these various things together with the evidence that we very definitely have, uh, they, it would have uh, just added that, that much more strength to it. There's no question but that he is the man now with the fingerprints and things that we have. This uh, fellow uh, uh, Rubenstein down there, uh, he is offered to take the lie detector test, but his lawyer's got to be cross consulted first, and I doubt whether the lawyer will allow him. He's one of these criminal lawyers from the West Coast, and somewhat like an Edward Bennett Williams type, and almost as much of a shyster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you got any uh, any relationship between the two here? Uh, between uh, uh, Rubenstein? Yeah. No, at the present time, we have not. There was, was he, a story down there that... Was uh, he ever in his bar and stuff like that? There was that. a story that this fellow had been in this nightclub, that he had a strip tease joint that he has, but that has not been able to be confirmed. Now, uh, this fellow Rubenstein is a, is a very shady character, has a bad record, street brawler, fighter, and that sort of thing. And uh, in the place in Dallas, if a fellow came in there and couldn't pay his bill completely, Rubenstein would beat the very devil out of him and then throw him out of the place. He was that kind of a fella. He didn't drink, didn't smoke, boasted about that. He would, he, he's what I would put in the category, one of his egomaniacs. He likes to be in the limelight. He knew all the police uh, in that white light district where the joints are down there. And he also uh, let him come in, see the show, get food and get liquor and so forth. That's how I think he got into police headquarters. Uh, because uh, they accepted him as kind of a police character hanging around police headquarters. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, raised no, no question. Of uh, course, they, they never made any moves as the pictures show, even when they saw him approaching this, uh, this fellow and got up right to him and pressed his pistol against, uh, against Oswald's stomach. Uh, uh, neither of the police officers on either side made any move to push him away or to grab him. It wasn't until after the gun was fired that they then moved. Now, of course, that, that is not the highest degree of efficiency, so I to say. Secondly, the chief of police admits that he uh, moved him in the morning uh, as a convenience and at the request of the motion picture people who wanted to have daylight. He should have moved him at night, but he didn't. And, uh, I mean, it, uh, those derelictions in that phase. But so far as tying Rubenstein and Oswald together, we haven't as yet done so. There have been a number of stories come in. Uh, we've tied Os we've, we've tied Oswald into the uh, Civil Liberties Union in New York, membership into that, and of course into this uh, thing, uh, this to this Cuban Fair Play Commission uh, committee, which is which was pro Castro and dominated by communism and financed uh, to some extent by the Castro government. How many? How many? How many shots were fired? Three. three. Any of them fired at me? I know there was another, there. all three at the present. All three at the present, and we have them. Mm -hmm. uh, two of the shots fired at the president were splinted, uh, but they had characteristics on them so that our ballistic expert was able to prove that they were fired by this gun. Uh, the the which, third shot, which uh, which hit the president, he was hit by the first and the third. The second shot hit the governor. The third shot is a completely is a complete bullet that wasn't shattered, and that rolled out of the president's head. I tore a large part of the president's head off, and uh, in trying to massage his heart at the on the, at the hospital on the way to the hospital, they uh, apparently uh, loosened that and it, it fell on to the the stretcher, and we recovered that, and we have that, and we have the gun here also. Were they aiming the president? Uh, they were aiming directly at the president. So they, there's no question about that. This this telescopic lens which I've looked through, it brings a person as close to you as if they were sitting right beside you. And uh, we also have tested the fact that you could fire those three shots that were fired uh, within three seconds. There's been some stories going around in the papers and so forth that uh, there must have been more than one man but because no one man could fire those shots in the time that they were fired. We've just proved that by the actual test that we've made. How did it happen? They hit Connolly. Uh, Connolly turned. Ahead. Connolly turned to the president at the, when the first shot was fired. And I think in that in that turning, it was where he got hit. If he hadn't uh, turned, he probably wouldn't have got hit. I think that's very likely. When well, the president got hit the second one? Uh, no, no, the president wasn't hit with the second one. At the, I see if, he, if Connolly had been in his way. Oh, oh yes, yes. 
Uh, the president, no doubt, would have been hit. He'd have been hit three times. He'd have been hit three times.